2014 um, electricity level three. Question two, batteries. The circuit diagram shows two batteries connected into a circuit. The internal resistance of the 11 volt battery uh, is 2.70. So they're just stating everything we've got here. Internal resistance R2 of the second battery is um, 2.50. So uh, this is going to be Kirchhoff's laws, Kirchhoff's laws, um, to work out some unknown probably currents in the circuit. Let's go down and see what we get. Uh, switches S1 and S2 are closed. Switch S3 is left open. So um, we're, um, we're we're dealing with just this top portion uh, when S3 is open. Show that the current on the circuit is 0 0.331 amps. Um, the way to do this, again, is Kirchhoff's Laws. Um, we'd probably take a loop uh, going from point to point to point to point. Um, if, we, if we're constructing our, um, our loop, we would, we would imagine um, a particular direction for the current flow. Um, you can just state one. It's easiest just to state one. So I'm going to state it going in that direction, that direction, that direction. And... Um, where, yeah, we might end up, if we've chosen the direction wrong, we might end up with a negative value for what we're expecting, but um, we can just pick our direction and go with it. Now, um, the next thing to do would be to write our phase or arrows showing the, um, the point at which point towards the higher, they're not really phases, but they point towards the higher energy potential end um, of each position. So starting from the, um, from the top over here, and I might just draw these in green, uh, just to give you a, a different um, perspective. From um, going through the 10 volt, that's the positive side, that's the negative side. So you're going to draw your power supply phase or pointing towards high energy point there. We're going with the current through this uh, second resistor down the bottom, 2.50 um, there. So uh, phase or arrow high energy potential is over there. Same here, high energy potential is over there. Um, and as we go through, high energy potential is over there. Because there's a voltage drop as you go through uh, with the current and flow. That direction there. And then because we've got our positive and negative of the battery, this one's going to be that way. So now, once we've got our phase or arrows in place, we go around the loop that, that we've created there. And we just do plus or minus whatever they are. So I'm going to write that out for you since it's a wee bit of a tricky one and um, we'll, just, we'll just see what we end up with. Um, we should have one unknown which is our current that we can calculate. So um, I'm going to call that A, B, C, D. Starting at A, A to B there's nothing. From B to C you're going against the arrow so it's minus 10.0. Um, and then you're going against the arrow again so it's minus I times... Uh, 2.50, that's Ohm's law of equals I times R, so this is the voltage drop across that. And then we've got another voltage drop, minus uh, whoops, I times 20.0, um, and then nothing from C to D. From D to A, we've got another um, against the arrow, so minus I times 5.00. And um, excuse me, this is going to head into a, a second line down here. Um, and then uh, again, it gets here minus I times 2.70. And then this time, which is our only plus in the whole circuit, interestingly enough, is plus um, 11.0 volts. All of that, being a Kirchhoff voltage law loop, equals 0 volts. Um, so you would take that, you would... Um, add up all of these I times somethings and rearrange for I to, to calculate it. Um, because both of the batteries are pushing against each other, you would uh, suspect there would be quite a low current, and I think that's what you get. But I'm not going to linger on that. Replay it if you need a recap. In which direction will the current be flowing through switch S1? Um, now, this depends on um, if I got my current direction correct. If, and I'll, I'll go down, no, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it here. We're going to hit that red up again. If, um, if my current direction that I chose here is correct, that it would give us a positive value 
for the current calculated. Okay, if it's positive, then um, then the direction would be right to left, which is that way through S1. If I calculated a negative value, then it would be running from left to right. Maybe I should rewrite it, but anyway, you get the idea. So that's that's what they're trying to get at with, with question B. Question C, uh, switch S3 is now closed, so that all three switches are closed. Show using Kirchhoff's laws that the current through S3 is 1.87 amps. Um, so we're going to need a loop around the outside, so I'll just really roughly sketch this for you. We're going to have to draw a loop all the way around the outside this time. And we can't assume, so we can't assume um, that the current is the same. So we must do a new, new voltage loop with new I values. So we can't just take that current value that we had above use a current equation because we've got a current going around here plus whatever's here. Okay, we can't do that. We have to we have to assume that it's a different current and do a new calculation. Uh, I'm going to cruise back up and see if I can sketch that for you. Um, Messier. Uh, what can we use? What colour? Let's go for purple. Purple looks like it'll stand out nicely. So um, this time all the switches are closed but we want to do a loop from there to there to there to there. So nothing down there, nothing there, nothing there. But if we're still picking the current going the same direction through there, it's going to be um, zero equals minus I times 5.00 uh, minus I times 2.70 plus, because you're going to do 11.0. And you can rearrange that, find the new current, and see if it matches up with what they've given you down there. Very messy now. Okay. D. Switch S1 is now open, leaving switches S2 and S3 closed. After the circuit has been operating for some time, the 10 volt battery starts to go flat. The student suspects this is caused by an increase in the internal resistance. Explain what if. So most of that was uh, fluff, and you didn't really have a, a, a lot of need for that. We're talking about this internal resistance increase. Explain what effect a changing internal resistance has on the power delivered in the 20 ohm resistor. Just quickly refresh our memory. Lots of back and forward, but where's the 20 ohm resistor? Um, there it is there. So um, we uh, let's let's go back down again. Um, the changing internal resistance, which was this internal resistance, what we'll have on the 20 ohm resistor. Um, a larger internal resistance means you're going to have a greater voltage drop across there, um, and uh, less current uh, coming through that portion of the. Um, so, with those two things combined, and the easiest way to look at it is you're going to have less of a voltage across that. But let's just cruise down, make sure we're answering the question correctly. Um, and it's power. Okay. So power equals current times voltage. Um, and it doesn't specifically give us a changing internal resistance. We would assume it's increasing. If, um, if, if the... Uh, yeah, uh, just to refresh our memory as well. In the circuit, we're skipping the top bit because we've got that switch open and the two switches down here closed. <coughs> so it's a single series circuit, makes it a bit nicer to consider for the voltage. I think it was 10 volts, doesn't really matter. But um, changing one resistor means you're going to change the voltage across it. And the voltage divides up according to the proportion of those two resistors. Um, the one with twice the voltage, twice the resistance will have twice the voltage, so forth. Um, so we, where are we? Uh, a full answer will include some sample calculations. So you can do, do a calculation using the voltage of the supply um, and the, um, the current, because the current is going to change. Just pick two random scenarios maybe. Use R uh, for the internal resistance as it is and then maybe double it. Two times R internal. Then you show that with an increase you're going to decrease the circuit current overall um, and you're also going to um, 
decrease the voltage over the 20 ohm if it's increasing the internal resistance. That's going to have a double impact on your power equation, which is finally getting to the actual answer. If you're decreasing the current, decreasing the voltage, you're actually decreasing the power by a power of 2. That's, yeah, by a factor of 2 to the power of 2. Um, the other way to look at it is P equals I squared R, or P equals V squared over R. So there's that squared factor if you lower the current, and that incorporates that lowering of the voltage. But Okay, you get the gist.